Where are you right now, Rich? I'm at a gas station somewhere <laughs> on the way to Carnoustie, Dan, <laughs> uh, and they're selling they're selling Krispy Kreme donuts here, but I'm going to resist uh, because I've ate, I've eaten four pounds of bread in the last three days. <laughs> they do bread nine ways to high heaven over here, and. Uh, you don't want to come here and diet. Uh, not, it's not pretty. But we're on our way to Carnoustie, and we're going to see Jean Van de Velde, our old friend. And we're going to revisit 1999. Oh, boy. Uh, when he jumped in the burn. Do you know, you remember what happened in 99, obviously, Dan, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, me. Um, it was the greatest triple bogey putt in history. The, I, I would... I would say it's the only time in golf history that someone has fist pumped uh, <laughs> a full tiger fist pump on a putt for triple because it sent him to the playoffs but i don't want to get into all the details but he only needed to make double bogey to become the first frenchman in like 100 years to win and we had uh pretty much wrapped up the week the computers were down everybody had written their stories and couldn't wait to get out of carnoustie because it's kind of a bleak little town and it was a forgettable open because it was just too damn hard. Uh, and then he jumps in the creek, and it started pouring. And five hours later, I was wandering down the train tracks in Carnoustie smoking a Marlboro, and I don't smoke cigarettes. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how out of hand that week got or that day got. But, you know, one quick story about Vanderbilt. I interviewed him in Paris uh, two years ago. Just what he's done since Carnoustie and he actually became the tournament director of the French open, the golf tournament on the European tour. And he's helped to bring the Ryder cup to Paris in 2018. And I went full Morley safer at the end of the interview. And I leaned in and I said, John, are you haunted by Carnoustie? And he paused and he leaned in, he looked me right in the eye and he said, let me tell you something. My friend Carnoustie was one day of my life. It was not my whole life. Case closed. I thought that was a great answer. Talking to Rich Lerner from the Golf Channel, joining us somewhere in Scotland at a gas station. Uh, how perfect was Stenson yesterday? Outside of the two three putts, technically the first was not recorded as a three putt because he was just on the, the front fringe. But outside of one and 11, as perfect as, as a golfer can be. Uh, he hit it like Hogan, and he putted like Tiger in his prime. It, it was as good as I have ever seen. And I mean, we, we've seen some good stuff. Uh, he's always been known as, and here comes the phrase, Dan, <laughs> a premier ball striker. Um, <laughs> we're fascinated with ball striking, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, and he, he's always been a powerful guy. Uh, and, and what's been missing is the putting. And he putted lights out the last two days. Somebody said he out-putted Phil, which is not easy to do. Uh, he was perfect, Dan. But if you're Mickelson and you're 46, like, like how do you compartmentalize this, that you played as well as you've ever played or could play, and you didn't make any mistakes, and you come away in second place? You, you, you do what he's always done. You, you pack your bags and you move on. And, and I think Phil has, has been exceptional in that regard, whether it's been a Pinehurst in 99, which is a Payne Stewart, or wing foot in 06 where he made that horrendous mistake on the last hole, or Marion two years ago, Phil packs up his bags and he goes to the next spot. And I, I think what, what has made Phil so special is um, his love for the game, his love for the chase. He loves everything about it. And at 46, he's kind of still chiseling away, even though the bust is already in the Hall of Fame. He's actually ascendant right now, which is bizarre at 46. He's getting better. And he wants it, I think, as badly as he, as he did at, at, at 36. Uh, but but I, I just think you move on. And uh, look, his score, 17 under, wins 141 of 145 Open Championships. His <laughs> score at the Masters last year when he finished second to speak, he was 14 under. That would have won 74 of 80. He could not have done much more yesterday. Uh, he, he, he starts the day one back. And he makes four birdies and an eagle on a pretty hard golf course to shoot 65. And he loses by three? Yeah. That's, that's absurd. And there's not much you can do but just tip your cap to the other guy. He was just too good. Whose career would you want to have, Mickelson's or Tiger's? Wow. 
Tiger. Uh, no disrespect to Phil, but 14 majors and 79 wins. Uh, you know, Phil's at 42 wins with, with five majors, pure numbers. Uh, uh, you could make the case that Phil, at this point in his life, is, is possibly more beloved uh, than Tiger. But if Tiger were to somehow mount a comeback, I think he'd probably go uh, from bewildering to beloved pretty quickly. People like a winner. I probably would say I would probably say Tiger. I, and that's if you're talking sheer numbers. I wouldn't want uh, all that Tiger has gone through. Yeah, that's for sure. I wouldn't want that level of, of scrutiny. I wouldn't want uh, the the emotional wreckage that he's he's endured. Uh, one other thing that it almost felt like what Rory said prior to the start of the Open was there throughout the tournament, whether it was brought up or it was on his yeah. mind. And you just, I, I, I don't know that, I think we kind of uh, took it for granted that Tiger was on top for so long and every single stop, the spotlight was on him. The questions were being asked. Here's Spieth and Rory who, I think they had a hard time processing that, you know, their, their weeks at there. One, you know, here's Speed talking about, hey, I can't, you know, don't expect me to do what I did last year, this year. And then Rory, you know, the whole Olympic stuff and growing the game of golf. I don't think they handled it too well this week. I, I think that the generation, the new and, and lauded generation, and they, they've done a lot, and they're good young men. And I like them personally. I think they had a bad week. I think they're in a bad spell right now, and I don't think they're leading. I think, uh, as it relates to the Olympics, Dan, uh, look, in, in, in fairness, disclose that, that you and I uh, are, are, are part of this uh, corporate effort. This is a Comcast NBC Olympic Games. I'm proud to be a part of it, certainly. Uh, we just get that, that out. Uh, we, we, we do have a vested interest in, in seeing golf in the Olympics uh, go as smoothly as possible, and, and that's not been the case. Um, look, um, the powers that be, I'll address the Olympics if I have a moment here, that the powers that be, and, and so your audience knows the top four players in the world are not going. Uh, some have said Zika, some have, uh, Jordan's hedged it a little bit and said it's not specifically Zika, it's overall health concerns. We've heard uh, there, there are some security concerns, and that may be legitimate. Uh, some, like Jason Day, Zika, wants to expand his family. Uh, we've also heard that uh, they, they were, the players were not sort of vested by the powers that be, and the powers that be uh, bear some responsibility in, in, in all of this, in, in not getting out in front and guaranteeing security and travel arrangements and so forth. Uh, but that said, uh, I think this, this would have been a, a wonderful opportunity for someone like Jordan, say, to step out and announce, look, is there a security risk? Yes, I think anywhere you go in the world now, there is a, a security risk. But at this time when the world is, is splintered and hurting, I feel it's important to go and stand with the peace-loving nations of the world, shoulder to shoulder with my sisters and brothers, 10,000 other athletes around the world, carry the torch for the sport of golf and wave the flag for my country. I think it's important right now. Uh, I think that would have been a great, a great move for someone like Jordan or Rory. They chose otherwise, and that's their, that's their right, and they have their reasons. Uh, but, but they looked, the perception uh, has, it, it is not good. Uh, say what you will, and they may not care about that. The golf golfers look entitled. Uh, the the uh, preponderance of players of athletes pulling out of the Olympic Games because of health concerns uh, would be male golfers, and not female golfers. So the argument there is that it, this means more to the women. I look. I get this is not as important as a major. We all understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, but but I think it would have been good. I think it will be. I mean, not would be. It will be good for the sport because I promise you, and I've spoken to the Indian golfer, Honor Ban Lahiri, that a, a thousand random people in his country uh, don't know what a green jacket is, but they all know what a gold medal is. And governments invest in Olympic sports. So if you have any desire to see the sport grow, uh, I think you, you'd, you'd take a look and understand the value of this initiative. But, but I don't think overall it was, it was a great week for the young guys. Safe travels there, Rich. We'll be watching, and uh, tell the guys we said hello. Thank you, Dan. All the best. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.